Alam niyo naman po, eh, lumabas na ang uh, mga bagong um, uh, mga bagong uh, abogado, mga pumasa sa bar exam noong uh, April 29. Tinitingnan ko lang po dito at ang uh, statistics po ay uh, uh, 27.36 lang ang pumasa. Mga 7,000 po ang uh, kumi, kumuha pero mga 2,000 lang ang pumasa at kaya ang tala, ang percentage ng passing ay 27.36. Talaga po mababa. Uh, mababa pero compared sa iba, eh medyo, medyo mataas. Pero hindi pa rin po umabot ng 30%. No po? Kaya ngayon, ating pong, uh, ating pong kakapanayam, panayamin ang isa sa pumasa. Pero pambihira po ang istorya nito. At siya na po ang mag, uh, mag uh, kikwento po sa atin. I-interviewin ko po siya at ma- makikinig tayo. Kaya pinapakilala ko po sa inyo si Emmanuel Nicole Valencia. Ah, nagtapos to, siyempre, pinagyayabang ko rin ito sa Far Eastern University Institute of Law. At siya ay batch 2018. Ngayon po siya pumasa sa batch 2019. Magandang gabi sa iyo. Uh, Nicole, how are you? Good evening, sir. I'm doing well po. How are you? How are you? Uh, alam niyo po, uh, si Nicole po ay um, ay estudyante namin, very active po yan sa FEU. Nicole, uh, natapos ka ng 2018, pero pumasa ka ng 2019. Uh, kung mamarapatin mo at if okay with you, ah, uh, Explain mo nga iyon, Nicole. So, I graduated in 2018, like you mentioned, and then I took po the 2018 bar. Okay. Unfortunately po, I was not able to make the passing grade. Um, actually, when I got my test scores, it turned out that my grade was 74.4. Wow, ang sakit! Ang passing grade was... <laughs> ang passing grade po was 75. So, 0.6 po yung kinulang. Uh-oh. So, sabi ko, kunin ko na lang po ulit, make another try, and hopefully I'll be able to achieve my dream. Alam mo, Nicole... But it was very hard, sir. Oh, alam mo, Nicole, no? Alam mo, Nicole, ito nga, no? Kasi, uh, isa, actually, ito na ang pinakamahirap na examen na binibigay ng gobyerno compared to other licensure exams, compared to medicine, compared to nurses, compared to teacher, ang uh, pinaka mabigat e eh, ang pag uh, bar exam na tinatawag na kinukuha ng abogado. Kaya doon sa mga hindi mapalad na papasa, ang sakit-sakit noon at parang parang ang hirap umahon ika nga. Pero ikaw, ikaw hindi hindi nasira ang loob mo. O, oh, oh, medyo ata nasira. O, oh, ano ba nangyari? How did you overcome this? The first, the first, ano, the first anguish. Ika nga. Nicole, kwento mo nga. Sir, honestly, when the results came out, it felt like my world was ending. Um, I wasn't sure. This was 2018, not no? 2018, no? Yes, 2018. Oh. The results came out on May 3 of 2019. Um, and when I did not find my name on the list, eh, syempre, sir, umiyak ako. As in, ugly cry po talaga. Uh-oh. And I told everybody who did not see me that I was okay and that I was going to be okay. Pero po, sir, talagang sa loob-loob ko, hindi po ako sigurado kung dapat ko pang ipagpatuloy yung laban to try to become a lawyer. Nagdalawang isip ka ba, uh, Nicole, na ito nga bang para sa'yo o talagang pinipilit mo lang sarili mo? What did you think? What did you think at that point? Yes, sir. I, I honestly felt like bakit ko ba pinagpi, pinagpipilitan yung sarili ko sa isang profession na ayaw naman sa akin. It, it came to that like point. I had been rejected by an entire profession. Talagang it came to that point. That, that, yes, that, uh, the, the, the kind of... Uh, Doubt came to that point, and and how were you able to recover this? Oh, and or or maybe ang susunod na tanong eh, how why did this linger? Ano ang mga environment nung ito ay parang nagrarab in sa yow ah through ah number more days. Well, sir, um, 
social media tends to really support our passers. There's this fascination with the bar exams and the passing rates and top notchers and you know that that's all justified because people really do work hard to become attorneys but at the same time for those who didn't pass every time you see a new story about bar passers or about top notchers or about something good that happened to someone else it doesn't even feel like they're rubbing salt in your wounds it almost feels like they're sticking their finger inside your wound and prying it apart. Oh talagang nakakasira po na loob. Oh, talaga ha? Wow, wow. And, and, and how long, the, uh, for as long as social media uh, was doing this, no? Talagang, uh, and, and then, and then, and then how did this subside or what, what, how did the change came about? I actually stopped checking social media first. And then, kaya lang po, sometimes the stories would still come out on the news. So even if you're just trying to stay updated, meron ka pa rin makikita na it will trigger your emotions. Oh, eh. And it felt like it wouldn't end. Pero little by little, you feel a bit better every day. And then some days you feel worse. It, it's really true what they say na it gets worse before it gets better. Yes. Um, and, 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 and in your case, it's, it's worst... Because nga, you you did not reach it by a hairline. Talagang yes. just just para mal malabuhok lang yon. One more strand of hair probably will put you above the passing mark, di ba, Nicole? Yes, sir. Sobrang lapit po talaga. And there were quite a few of us um, from FEU who were really on that borderline. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so it it was a question of how to get back up and how to start to review again the first thing i did sir was i i grabbed a pen and a piece of paper and i wrote down all of the reasons why i deserve to be a lawyer all of the people who helped me along the way all of the support that i got all of the things that i want to do when i become an attorney and and even all of the people that i want to prove wrong the, the ones who doubted me, the ones who said I wouldn't make it. But this is the list. Ko. Sabi ko, these are the people that, I've, that I'm going to make them eat their words. A alam mo, a alam mo, Nicole, no? it's not only a personal anguish. No? It's also the, the thought that people who were behind you, uh, you know, it burdens your mind also na, wow, I, I failed them. Parang ganon, di ba? And that adds more to the misery and to the anguish. No? Talagang, Kaya it's so it's so different eh, when you when you did not make uh, or that grades a bar diba diba Nicole Yes sir Opo. And Actually, so what, what felt worse was disappointing everybody else Yes you para sa akin I can get over my own pride but the fact that I let so many people down was really what hurt me so okay, so how did you how how did you rise up and uh, really overcame this uh, this 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 uh, life or period of anguish. Well, sir, the first thing I did, like I mentioned, was to write down all of the um, all of the people who had supported me, and it gave me a sense of purpose for why I wanted to really become an attorney. Mm -hmm. And then the second list that I made was. Um, of all of the obstacles that I encountered along the way um, and all of the, the things that I had done to be able to get past them. And that sort of helped me to renew my strength to keep fighting. And then the last thing I did was I gathered all of the notes and letters that I had received before the bar and I read them again. And it proved to me that so many people believed in me. And just by doing this, it renewed my confidence also in myself. So those were the three things that I did that helped me to be able to get back onto the course. And after that, after that you just sat down and sat just down and did your job and you studied as normal as possible. Yes and no, sir. Um, there were days when I would be okay when I felt like I could move on. So I... I would take advantage of those days like I made a study calendar and I put together the resources that I would need for the yeah. review. Oh. And then there were days when talagang hindi ka pa rin okay. <laughs> you think that you're already fine and then a day hits you out of nowhere 
where all of a sudden you just feel bad again. So on those days, I just let myself feel what I needed to feel. It sort of was that cycle in the beginning of, of being okay and then not being okay. And you don't know what you're going to get the next day. So you just take the okay days and you try to be productive. And the days when you can't move, you just don't move. And you know, no, and to think that by April you learned of the news, and by, no, by November it will be bar month again. Diba? And that's yes. only April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. That's around that's around six months before that month of November, isn't it? Hirap no, no? So, so what else? What else did you do? Sir, I actually tried to analyze what would work best for myself. I think that a lot of us who are going to take the bar listen to the stories of the top notchers and about their study habits what they did and then we try to emulate them because we think if it worked for them maybe it will also work for me mm -hmm. but i think the main thing the second time around that i realized was that i can't just copy what someone else did i have to do what works best for me and so i had to curate my resources i didn't want to read you know two or three books per subject because it was just too overwhelming and once i got it down to a system where i knew that this is what worked that's what i stuck with for the entire party wow wow and this went on up to the day of the uh up to the day of the exam diba? up to yes. the day of the exam so so when it was nearing already uh that you that, that this is your second round of preparation how did you feel did you doubt yourself? Did you were you excited? Were you were you an eager beaver? And you said to yourself, "Sige, bring it on. Let's do it." What did you feel? I the week before the first Sunday, I was scared. I was nervous because ito na naman. I would go to UST every Sunday morning and sit for the exams for the whole day, and then. You know, drag myself back home and hopefully get some rest mm -hmm. but the closer that it got to the to the actual day the more i tried to cite myself nah you're prepared for this you know what you're doing you've already been through it so just go ahead and take the exam do your best and whatever happens happens wow. and i think going into the exams with a more relaxed less nervous mindset really helped me to focus on each individual question and answer it in the best way that I possibly could. Oh, talaga. And, and, um, and uh, did you learn anything? Did you, did you make certain adjustments on how you answer, how you, how you, budget, how you budget your time, how you, how you approach the uh, uh, questions? What adjustments did you make? The biggest adjustment, sir, was to um, how I structured my answers. Before, during the first bar and in law school, I was following, or I was trying to follow the method that my professors had taught me. Attorney um, Timmy Aquino used to say, use the ALAC method. Answer, legal basis, analysis, and conclusion. Um, Attorney Rigera also has uh, the same setup but with a different acronym. He uses the CRACK method, so conclusion, rule, analysis, conclusion. Mm -hmm. My problem was I was not restating the conclusion at the end. Um, and my answers were not tight enough for me to be able to write the conclusion twice. And that meant that I was taking up too much time. Um, and so the second time around, I decided that Prior to the bar, I would have to learn how to tighten up my rule and my analysis so that I would make sure to write the conclusion both at the beginning and at the end. And I think that that served me well. Wow, it's a, technique. It's a, it's a, it's not, in a way, it's a skill. It's, 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 a, it's a how to answer the bar. So that's, that's a good way to answer the bar. And, um, and that was consistent all throughout. Yes, sir. I think that some people had issues with the two-examiner rule because they were trying to tailor their answers to who they thought the examiner was for that particular section. Mm -hmm. But if you try to do that, you just end up wasting time, especially if your guess is wrong. 
Yes. And there's a chance that whoever you thought the examiner was is not actually who the examiner is. Did you? So if you just stick to one method throughout the entire exam, then you have a better shot of writing and expressing yourself properly and conveying the answer that you want them to read. Uh, alam mo, Nicole, no? uh, the first time it was just a hairline, hairline below the passing mark. Did it come? Did it? Did it cross your mind that you know it's it's not really the content, it's not really the substance. I have it. It probably is my handwriting or, as you said, the way I structure my answer. Maybe that's that's the problem. So adjustments yes, were made. Sir, actually, one of the things that I did was I went back to FEU. I I talked to Associate Dean Bukinko and I had to ask, sir. I was so close to the passing grade. What did I do wrong? How did I fall short? And so what he did was he gave me one of his sample questions from an exam that he had previously given to his class. And he said, just answer it. If your content is wrong, it doesn't matter. I just want to see how you answer and how you write. And since my, I knew that my handwriting wasn't really going to be a problem, I actually teach penmanship improvement workshops. So definitely that wasn't it. I found out that it was the way that I present my answers. Um, in a way, I had gotten feedback uh, earlier in law school that my answer, the way that I answer is quote unquote mayabang. And the reason we found out, the reason why that was the feedback for my answers was I was not restating the conclusion at the end. It just sort of left the examiner wondering what exactly my answer was. I was making the examiner work where I should have been the one doing it. Alam mo, Nicole, do, so that was what we corrected. Alam mo, do you agree, Nicole? Ako itong nakikita ko, no? Uh, I think most of the bar repeaters, it's not really the content or it's not really the substance. No, it's either nervousness or the extreme, overconfidence. Just, okay, I know naman yan, itong answer dyan. And yet, nagkukulang pala yung substance habang isinasagot nila because they felt personally, kompleto na yan, okay na yan. Yung other extreme naman, so nervous, hindi sila makapagsulat. And therefore, it affects their articulation when they write. Totoo ba yan? Is that also your point? Those are both very big factors. I remember when I first took bar in 2018, I was really scared. And so, I went back to old habits of trying to pander to the examiner and write in a way that I thought they might like rather than just sticking to what I knew actually worked. Oh, um, and, okay. and part of that was just nerves. Everything what had gotten under my skin and then you're stuck in a classroom and it's hot. Actually, during the first time I took the bar, I was positioned next to a window in the door and by the time the afternoon exam came around, the sun was right in my face. And so I couldn't focus. Huh. And so little things like that, that you allow to get to you, will really affect the quality of your answers. Whereas if you just focus and you think to yourself, I need to answer each question in this way, and I need to get through this many questions by this time elapsed, then you, you focus more on what's in front of you and, and all of the other factors that surround that surround you on that day, whether it's hot or it's cold or, or whatever, they just don't bother you anymore. Alam mo, nung nagbabar ako, it's not yet at UST, no? Uh, Doon kami sa MLQU, sa Man, uh, Manuel L. Quezon University, MLQU, at uh, tabi yun ng San Sebastian Church, tabi yun yun ng uh, mosque, at saka walang aircon, at ang mga lalaki eh hindi nakakalabas ng kwarto at meron parang arinola sa likod ang mga lalaki doon na lang pupunta at kuminari na rin ka ng klang 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 alam mo medyo may jingle pero mga babae lumalabas sila accompanied kaya ibang iba na ngayon ngayon I think uh, pwedeng lumabas yung mga lalaki at, uh, at i-accompany nila yes same procedure na po for guys and for girls they're all accompanied to the restaurant. And, and, and you know, you know, I always believe, you know, Nicole, you know, those who uh, fail the bar once and then take it again, talagang the kind of pressure and the kind of uh, struggle, struggle in just, just, you know, loosening up again and getting back to work and study, it's such a, it's such a, it's such a, 
an effort to do, isn't it? Diba? Uh, Nicole? And, 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 and kamukha ngayon, Nicole, you, you pass this bar, you pass this bar, and bar exam, do you think it's sweeter as ever? Dahil, wow, ang parating yung sinasabi, yung mga nagre-repeat at pumapasa, they, they triumph many times over talaga in ways you cannot imagine. Kasi ibang pinagdaanan nila. Uh, Ganon rin bang naisip mo? Yes, sir. Um, when I when I actually got the results this year, um, it was through a friend who called me. Yeah. And natakot ako because the first thing he said was, Nicole, meron ka na bang balita? And so I was really scared. Sabi ko, oh my God, second time ko na, bumagsak na naman ako. And then sabi ko, no, wala akong balita. Why? And he said, congratulations, attorney. And that was it. I lost it. I was crying and and it's difficult too now because with with the pandemic I'm I'm here alone I wasn't with my family so uh, by the time I called them they also didn't know what was going on because I was crying on the phone I said mom I passed I passed pero umiiyak ako so they were confused if I really passed or not <laughs> but it it really was much sweeter the second time around because of all of the work that went into it it's not just one year of prep now you're also counting the previous year of preparations that yes, you made yes, yes. plus all of law school and then you have your professors and your administrators and your entire school rooting for you and that's what yeah. makes it so much greater is knowing that you have a whole community behind you that's yeah yeah uh, yeah uh, uh, and everybody was just really uh, Kames at FEU, we have a, we had a list, and uh, actually the the first people we looked at, eh, yung mga kabatchmos, I don't want to say their names, siguro eh, interview ko na lang dito, but they all passed also, no? And it's so nice, and it's so nice yung uh, yung batch nyo, probably two or three na lang hindi pa pumapasa, but uh, it will it, eventually it will complete itself. And uh, ang problema lang, uh, medyo argabiado kayo. Kasi, kasi nga, normally, basta pumasa ka, up to the time of outtaking, kain ka ng kain, dain ng lilibre, pero kayo ngayon, home quarantine. Tapos, sir, at least maganda yung pictures namin sa outtaking. Pagkatapos na ng outtaking kami, Tata Basser. <laughs> so, what now? Uh, what now, Nicole? So, it's such, it's a it's a great story of resiliency, isn't it, diba? It's a great story. It's literally rising up, rising up from a feeling of devastation, rising up, effort, and then achieving. You know the sweetest victory of all, isn't it? Parang ang ang sarap ng Part of it we really owe to FEU. Um, we know that our core values are fortitude, excellence. And um, uh, sorry, <laughs> fortitude, excellence. Eh. Yung ating founder parating parating sa sabi ng ating founder. The last words ng Nika No Reyes before he was the uh, uprightness. Ah, uh, 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 si? So sir, we try to embody those values by taking the bar again. Uh -oh. We make sure na. Yung fortitude nandoon. Uh -oh. We we want to really pursue um, our dreams, and we don't let anything deter us. Yes. We try to embody excellence by achieving our full potential, and yes. of course, we try to embody uprightness um, when we take the lawyer's oath and we pledge to be um, to act as lawyers and to give every man his due. You know, so those are the, the right. values that guide us. You know, our founder, si Nicanor uh, Reyes. The last words he uttered to his chil to his children before being killed by the Japanese in no World War II was, "Be brave." No, kaya yun rin ang motto natin. Be brave, sa EPU. So, so that's. I mean, it was a courageous act. It was a brave, brave act, talaga, to just you know, uh, just rise up and just fight it again, di ba? It, it's a corollary to that. Um, now that you mentioned being brave, the alumni have started an initiative 
uh, we would like to offer our services to help those who will be taking the bar yeah. next year and in succeeding years. Uh, we want to give back to the community that supported us so greatly during our struggles. And we want to make sure that every future Tamarao lawyer will pass them. As a matter of fact, ang pinaplano nga namin, uh, pinaplano nga namin, Nicole, is to come up with a pairing or body-body system. Because we have enough 2018 and 2019 uh, bar passers, uh, parang i-assign ng, let's say, one one uh, one attorney from 2018 and 2019 batch to two or three graduates para para may counting mentoring if they need it alam nila kung saan tatakbo para rin makita yung uh, klase ng uh, like like what like what you did no you analyzed your mistakes and see where you were wrong and made certain adjustments no so that's what we plan and it, and, and people like you uh, ang makakatulong because you are the nearest to the experience. Yes, sir. And we're very much willing to help them. Oh, so, so how, now let's go to your family. Um, of course, your family was very happy. How happy were they? I mean, that's an obvious question, but I want to know. <laughs> uh, my parents were ecstatic. I mean, I was jumping around here and I know they were also jumping in our house in Makati. And I spoke to my siblings. Um, I have a sister who's in the U.S. So when the results came out here, it was almost close to midnight already where she is. Uh -oh. So she was also happy. And then my two other siblings who are here in the Philippines were very happy as well. Even my extended family from all over the place, they really um, were just not just relieved that I, I had already completed the experience, but they were very proud of what I had been able to accomplish. So the, the, the next thing to do is to, uh, to take your oath and sign the role and get your grades and uh, apply sa isang law office, diba, uh, Nicole? I've already applied sir, to a law office and um, if you would give me the honor, sir, I would also like to apply to well, of course, of course, you will always be welcome um, if there will be slots. Pero of course, of course, you're, you're all, all FEU, all, all FEU Tamaros are always welcome to FEU. And if they really want, we really look for positions for them. So, so uh, Nicole, so, um, well, you're, you're, so what, uh, so... Uh, it's abnormal, no? Normally, siguro, by this time, nasa labas ka. <laughs> or tomorrow, may schedule na. Si ganyan, manglilibre. Sige, punta ako. Diba? But now, you're just stuck here. And uh, and just, uh, what, what are you doing now? These days? Um, I finished up my resumes and my cover letters by Labor Day. I was very excited once results came out. So, I started applying already. Yeah. Um, and then, I started working on... Um, things that could possibly help those who are going to take the bar in the future. So yes. coming up with materials, speaking about my story, um, and, and things like that, just to, in my own way, uh, provide some help to other future lawyers. Alam mo, Nicole, you're such an inspiration ngayon. And all, even those all other repeaters. There was a bar top notcher who was also a repeater. Diba? Yes, and you know it, it's a uh, it's rising from the ashes literally kaya mas mapapagmalaki mo ma and, and throughout our history like for example Claro M. Recto he was a repeater and yet he became a very very well known senator and state state statesman no uh, uh, Nicole so so madami ka na pala plano any plans to after 2 3 or 4 years go abroad and uh, take your masters degree Yes, sir. Um, I actually had already been looking at the program um, for dispute resolution at Pepperdine University, which is also where I went to college. Oh, okay, okay. So Pepperdine. And where is this Pepperdine? Anong state ng United States? In Malibu, California. Sir. Wow. Alam mo problema, no? <laughs> because of this COVID-19 crisis, lahat naka-standstill, no? I, I, I have a son. I have a son who 
who's going to go on a doctorate in <laughs> sasabi ko hindi ba ma pwede hindi ba bang hindi ba pwede i ano yan i reschedule yan for the exam or uh, kasi everything is just ano uh, uncertain nowadays especially in the United States diba yes eh, di, uh, well yun yun wow wow Nico so so congratulations again and uh, thank you for sharing with us your very inspiring story thank you sir and thank you for the opportunity as well okay and uh thank you again nicole and uh bye-bye see you bye, sir, keep safe. Well, see bye bye you wow that's uh that's uh that's our very own uh, feu uh, uh student because you know what and she was not she was not uh uh she was not timid or ashamed in in uh, in hiding her story no in, in not hiding her story uh, parang uh, gusto niyang malaman ng lahat because she knows that uh, madaming masakit ang loob ngayon because nga 27% lang ang pumasa and she was saying na uh, perhaps her story can uh, can inspire people to take it up again it's not impossible I remember what she said dun sa sto- sabi niya. He framed this query to herself wrongly. She said, uh, ang question niya is, if I become a lawyer, mali pala daw yun. It's when will I become a lawyer. It's a matter of time, not a matter of contingency. Di ba po? So, so you're very very nice no very nice some perspective ni Nic- Nicola Nicole uh, from FEU Institute of Law. Thank you Nicole. Okay, let's see. At meron pa tayong konting oras. At tingnan po natin ang mga comments